And so before coming into uh, uni, I was deputy head girl. So the, the, the GMC sorry, states that patients cannot discriminate against doctors and doctors cannot discriminate against patients. So remember this is a public platform. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, today I am with some friends, as you can see. Friends say hey. hey. <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about our experiences in medical school. Um, and as you can see, we are all melanated females, so we will be talking Ow. from um, our perspective. Oh, guys, introduce yourselves. Uh, so, hey guys, uh, my name is Jessica, and I'm in my fifth year of med school. Hey everyone, my name is Lucrece and I'm in my fourth year of med school. Hey guys, I'm Khadija and I'm in my fifth year of medicine. And hey guys, my name is Jan and I am in my third year of medicine. So, the first kind of question is, how did you get into medical school? Don't all jump at once. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think me and Khadija, mm -hmm. we came straight out of sixth form yeah. into med school. Um, I actually took a gap year. What did you do in your gap year? <laughs> Well, um, I travelled, um, I've done a bit of modelling, um, done extra A levels, don't ask me why, but I did. She became and Miss Congo UK. Yay! Look it up, look it up. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I did. <laughs> um, and how did I get into medicine? So, if you've been following my videos, you know, I just graduated in biomedical science. Um, and now I'm in my second degree. You might be wondering how my third year of medicine if I just graduated like two months ago. Um, <laughs> so my uni does this like um, thing called the transfer where if you do well enough on your biomed degree, um, they pick a certain amount of people to be transferred straight onto third year of the medicine course. So that is how I'm here right now. Me and Lucrie started in the, in the same year, yeah. but we were freshers together. Yeah. So if I'd started in medicine, I would be in fourth year, mm. but I am in third year, but by God's grace, I'll get there in the end. <laughs> How did you find um, that sort of like journey of like getting into medicine? From sixth form to uni? Yeah. Tough. Yeah. <laughs> Challenging. Yeah, um, I think it is for everyone. Definitely not have enough help. Um, I felt like a lot of, I don't know about you guys, mm. but my teachers, a lot of them were clueless in okay. terms of what was needed mm. um, to get into medicine. A lot of them knew about, you know, certain amount of A's and A levels but they didn't know about the UK CAP, the BMAT, um, they didn't know what medical schools were like to take me based on my GCSEs season, all that kind of stuff and I literally had yeah, to go for a try and error. Like independent like mm. so you have to do it yeah. yourself. Yeah. For me I would say it wasn't too bad because I went to a private sixth form. So they had scholarship. Like they were kind of supportive. Yeah, we had like BMAT classes to you know do the revision and stuff like that. So it, was, wow. it wasn't too bad. Wow. <laughs> I went to a grammar school, so it was uh, they had they knew the university process really well. Mm -hmm. They knew how to like apply to um, Oxbridge and medicine and law and all of that stuff. So mm -hmm. I thankfully I did get the support, mm -hmm. but I still found it really really hard because just going through that at the same time as A-levels, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, interviews, rejections, because uh, mm -hmm. the rejections will come. Um, yeah. That is just, it's a very tough but worth it year. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just touching on what you said, Lucrisa, mm -hmm. about like how you didn't feel like there was enough support. I think like um, in this day and age, it's like a better place to be sort of when we have organisations like Melanin Medics. Yeah. yeah, so Melanin Medics, if you haven't heard of it, basically helps young black people trying to get into medicine um, they can like mentor you and give you a lot of advice and help your application on getting into med school so check them out so guys um, let's talk a little bit about like settling into med school once you actually got in so what was that like for y'all like did you find it easy to I don't know like you know find your own kind of people yeah what was it like just making friends <laughs> <laughs> If I'm on the side, <laughs> what? Well, I was your first friend. No, no, wait, hold on, hold on. Before I, before I, before I, before I, 
Hey, you're dramatic in here. Oh, I know, I'm not wrecking her. So, I won't lie, before I started med school, I thought I was going to have a terrible time. I just didn't think I would find my kind of people um, where I was right now. Um, and I just sort of think, I thought, okay, um, it's what I make it. What didn't help, I guess, is the fact that I was thinking gap you and I thought, oh, I'm gonna have so many people you're gonna need, it probably gonna be so mature. But that's the fear I had, but I told myself, it's my mindset, it's how I go into it, and I thought, okay, I'm actually gonna make this, you know, it's five years, mm -hmm. I can't go through this sulking. So I thought, yeah, let's go out there, let's talk to people, let's make friends. Yeah. <laughs> but just to touch on the point that we said there, um, mm. about like how you were going in at a slightly later stage and you thought everyone in the year group would be so much younger than mm. you. But like, the, I think, just to put it out there, don't be disheartened if you don't get in first time because mm. a lot of people mm. do not get in first time yeah. and a lot so of first year medics will be, like, like they won't be 18. Yeah. Some of them will have even have done another degree yeah. before mm -hmm. have come in onto it. So you'll have a lot of people that are older than you, you'll have people who are married and have children <laughs> yeah. on, in the same year <laughs> group as you. Mm. So yeah, it's not... Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's not all just 18 year olds in no. the first year. Mm. <laughs> And that's a good point to make, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, I think that I took a while to find my friends and stuff, and I think that's because I was commuting. Mm -hmm. So when you commute, it's very easy to just like be in your bubble, go to uni, then come back, mm -hmm. and feel a bit out of the loop. Yeah, because everyone living like in halls, like little have family that time squad, to bond in it. those connections. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you're like on your bus going home. <laughs> 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 um, but the advice that I would give is um, to join societies and stuff mm. because that's where you can meet your friends and meet people who are a little bit more like-minded. Aside from like joining societies, one thing I would also like give as a tip is to take up leadership positions um, mm. in various organisations, so like societies, even if it's not like presidency, I don't know, just showing like leadership roles mm. to add to your CV, build your portfolio kind of thing. Obviously, like everyone knows, like medicine is a very demanding course. How are you balancing yeah, the sort of hefty? Everyone must. <laughs> this but hefty workload but with your social yeah. life and also like home life as well. If you commute, like how is that all working out for you? How's your life basically? Yeah. How's my life? <laughs> how long do we have? <laughs> mm, he wants to go first. Cause <laughs> well, right now I'm intercalating. That means when you take a year out of med medical school, you add on a year to your med school mm -hmm. to do something of interest. Um, and that is more chill. So mm -hmm. I'm only, like I'm in labs two times a week, then lectures one day a week. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Whereas um, these two are in place work five days a week. So there are different years of medical school where it's going to be more busy or less busy i would always just say make sure all the time that you have at least one day of pure enjoyment where you're never doing <laughs> you're never doing any work that is one because if you die today your books are not going to save you the books are not memories <laughs> not the time. you can't come and kill yourself you can't you can't you can't 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 <laughs> <laughs> they will not write was almost a doctor on the two story, my friends. You didn't make it, so don't die for it. Just say it. <laughs> you, have to, you have to look after yourself before you're gonna look after yeah. other people, you know? Um, and secondly, if you leave a day out where there's no work, if there's ever any emergency um, during the week, i.e. family emergency, illness, period pains, or anything like that, then that means you always had one week one day spare yeah. that you can then use to catch up yeah. to catch up yeah, yeah. Mm, smart <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, like it. I feel like there's a misconception as to if you're you know balancing or doing things on the side or giving time for yourself there's somewhat a compromise to your academics mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which I strongly disagree with um, it's just Having the time, okay, wait, it's time to go out, you want to go out with your friends, mm -hmm. restaurant, cinema, whatever you want to do. Mm. If it's just sit and chill, um, always feel free to have that time and then always know that, okay, yeah, I've got work to do as well. Um, I'm someone that, me, when I'm doing my work, it's Netflix 24-7 or FaceTime. <laughs> she has watched all the shows on Netflix. Yeah, you, I still does her work. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> 
yeah it's important to switch off yeah when yeah, you're yeah. enjoying then then enjoy don't yeah. be thinking ah oh, i've got to be doing this work though because mm. that's not relaxing no, that's just yeah. stressing yourself out forever the work isn't thinking about you <laughs> 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 It's true, definitely. Um, I'd say if you're commuting as well, depending on how long your distance mm-hmm. is, my commute is quite long. Um, so I find that mm. a lot of my free time is my commute, which is a bit oh. sad. But, oh. <laughs> 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 but it's about making it work. So if I don't want to go out on a Saturday, because your girl parties. Yeah. She travels the world. The like, world. I do, I do you'll the find most. out from Instagram. That's <laughs> it, that's it, that's One post. Oh, she's in Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> like in the middle Just of like the that. <laughs> <laughs> but I just make it work. I'm the biggest finesse when it comes to placement and doing work as if in my exams. You know, I can't come and kill myself. But it's about being smart about it. If I know there's a time I really want to do something on Saturday and it's going to take me the whole day, then what will happen is I may not go to church on the Sunday or I'll go for half you know, the time and leave a bit early. It's just compensating correctly. You already know it's going to come the week after, so just basically balance. But don't just make time for studies, make time to relax because if you're not fried, what work are you doing? Nothing's going in. Yeah. And it's about working smart. Some people will be working mm-hmm. what twelve hours a day. You've done some, you, you've done more in an hour than they done, they've done in twelve hours. Which is about being smart, really. Just working right? smart, mm-hmm. work smart, work smart, and mm-hmm. make lists. Lists are my oh, best yeah. friend. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Make sure that you're productive. Um, Don't go overboard. Yeah. Though. yeah. What with lists? Yeah, yeah then you, might, you, might, you might get upset with the fact that you haven't done anything that was on there. Be smart of the list. It has yeah. to be an attainable list. Mm. Not something that's like, oh, cover like this many diseases or conditions. <laughs> Be real with yourself, you can't do all of that one day. But, um, yeah. You were talking about how you don't think having a social life should be seen as a compromise to your studies. Mm-hmm. But have you noticed that your social life has had to be compromised sometimes because of the course that you're studying? I'd say maybe just a little bit in the sense that not like weekends and stuff, more kind of, for example, we started our fourth year on the 24th of June. Everyone was taking holiday. Yeah. We started uni day, <laughs> so it was a bit difficult because you know people say, "Oh, let's meet up there," and then and mm-hmm. it's oh. for them to understand that actually I've started uni already. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's a bit hard because people wanted to travel and you can't really travel with them. And just um, having people that understand that and not too upset, and also mm-hmm. you know sometimes say, "Okay, uh, I'm tired from the week, but I'm still gonna go out on a Saturday." Um, at times like that, you find you have to compromise a little bit, but again, it's about how smart you are with it. I think that um, compare your first year maybe to other people's first year, it's, it is different. Mm, yeah. So I would say that there is sacrifice, but sacrifice that you don't realise because yeah. it just becomes your lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so in terms of yeah, your holidays, because it's placements, especially when you start clinical years, mm-hmm. your holidays go start, already start going like, you yes. need to like, <laughs> miss family holidays sometimes. Mm. Um, or you need to be studying during the holiday yeah. season. Yeah. That, that one hit me as a shock. Like, <laughs> uni. I was like, wait, when am I actually going to have the next Christmas holiday? <laughs> that's, just just chill. Yeah. that's not happening. Mm, like, yeah. And even when we become doctors, we're probably going to be working on Christmas Day. Like, yeah. You don't get to choose. <laughs> just. <laughs> <laughs> what has your experience been like on the wards? <laughs> yeah, Tea. I really want to grab your popcorn for this. Like. <laughs> yeah. yeah, do you it's have any... Any like I don't know, kind of like striking memories, memories, memories. <laughs> trauma. <laughs> Your trauma. trauma that you want to share and kind of like warn people about, or just get off your chest. Yeah. Tell your good self the story, please. Remember this is a public platform. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wouldn't say like direct. No, it was a bit direct. <laughs> <laughs> it was like in the way where they speak to you as if. There's no respect there. Mm. And it's like, okay, you're a consultant, but we're, you're also a human being. I'm mm. a human being as well. Mm. You can still talk to me in a decent way. Mm. Um, like, it makes you feel like insignificant as well. Mm. And it's like, Mr. Man. <laughs> Relax. Slow down. Yeah. 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 Like you, like. your ages. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know who I am. <laughs> that I am really somebody. And then it's not even just doctors, like, you have members of staff. Yeah. Well, just recently on my placement. Um, rolling their eyes, whispering, oh, medical students, this and that. It's like, mm. really, why? It's not necessary. Mm. I don't understand why, but you know. I think that was one of the things that was a shocker for me, like when yeah. I was on my first placement, like mm. just like, feeling like bottom barrel kind of thing. <laughs> 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 Honestly, like, 
I don't know, like when you're in like lectures and stuff, like yeah, I'm a med student, and then when you get on the ward, it's like everyone it's is just an annoyance. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was just a nuisance to everyone. Like, yeah. like it was just in everyone's way, like all the time. Like, that way. Yeah. One of the consultants was like to me though, um, you should never feel like that. So you're a member of the team. No one should ever make you feel like you're not. You need to assert your presence because one day mm -hmm. you're gonna be in our shoes mm. doing this. So you actually need to be here. Mm. Yeah. Only them all felt like that. But um yeah, that's actually really good advice. And also yeah. I think as medics, yeah, you can be like looked at as like a pest to the to the ward. Yeah. And also as black women, if you're a black um, female watching this, yeah. you can also feel like you shouldn't be there or mm -hmm. and people don't want you there. <laughs> so always just be confident that you belong there. You have worked your way to get there, so like I'm here, like so we can do that. <laughs> How about that? Um, I think I've been quite fortunate in terms of coming across good consultants. Maybe that's just because I know how to navigate deep or I know how to, you okay. know, throw a couple of jokes in there. Mm. I thought like, whenever I throw my gap year experience or what I did, it was like, oh, you did take your gap year. And I'm like, yeah. We usually got in with most of my consultants, unless they're just grumpy people. You'll get them. Like no matter what you do, they're just grumpy. That's fine. You just navigate your way through that. Um, I've had quite a good experience on the wards. I've always looked forward towards um, going on the wards and stuff like that. The experience that I've had was not actually um, a doctor or anyone in, the, anyone in the medical field. It was actually a patient. The consultant asked him, oh, would you mind if she comes in? Um, I've got a medical student with me. Is that okay? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Patient walks in, looks at me and goes, no, no, I, I don't want her here. <laughs> Again, to the chest. you can guess the profile of this person, um, and you know, I just left the room at that point. I was like, you know, what? I don't even care at this point. It's like, if you are dying, I can refuse to treat you. No, you can't. Oh, I can't. That's sad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you are racist. Hey, Madame no, but you can. If someone's racially abusive towards you, you have to treat them. Someone else can treat them. I've asked about this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, the, the GMC states that patients cannot discriminate against doctors and doctors cannot discriminate against patients so if you are ever in a situation where you feel discriminated against then do go to your senior because you need to feel safe yeah. um, at, at work no, so she's saying in a better way <laughs> what if you are the senior Wait, oh i guess you have to know <laughs> 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 if i was in a position where i know i can let someone take someone else take over and the person is literally does not want me to treat them because they've been racially discriminated towards me then I can't force that because they could hurt me in the process of me trying to treat them so that's what I mean in that sense but quite frankly overall I've had good experiences um, it was that one patient and I think it's just knowing as Jessica said how to be assertive and um, it's a learning process yeah. I don't know how to be assertive enough but <laughs> that's a learning process um, and just being comfortable in who you are knowing that no matter where you go it's not just in medicine that people are going to look at you funny or mm. left-sided mm. uh, depending it you know you can be any ethnicity we know that certain ethnicities will be more than others definitely mm. but it's just if you're sure trying to be sure in who you are and showing that and knowing that actually before my color comes my intelligence and my capabilities then really and truly there's nothing that, can, that should get to you because you've earned this place Hello. you are where you belong Come on. so don't let anyone else tell you that oh because they don't like what you look like they're insignificant or that you will mm. never be a good doctor that's not what makes you a good doctor at the end of the day so you know, yeah. <laughs> this is real life, guys. Mm. This is real life. Real life.